Welcome to Activity 2.2, the exploration of the ocean floor. So our learning target for today is we're going to analyze additional data involving the ocean floor and determine how this evidence fits into Wagner's theory of continental drift. The expectation for you is to make good observations and answer the questions for Activity 2.2. So you're going to answer the two making sense questions on page 24 and you're also going to take notes on page 25 of the book. So the past and the future. We know that Wagner, and you've read about Wagner and his continental drift theory, the idea that at one point in time all the continents were one large landmass called Pangaea. Now even though Wagner's theory was not widely accepted at first, he continued seeking additional data to use as evidence to support his claim. And he tried to come up with better explanations for how the continents moved on the Earth. And if you remember, it's, he couldn't explain the mechanics of how these continents move. And that was the big hang-up. So his early evidence was pretty convincing. However, he could not explain how they moved. And without that, a lot of people did not support him. Now, it was not until after Wagner's death that enough new evidence was discovered. In this activity, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these new observations, these new things that are actually found in the oceans, you know, actually the ocean floor. So not in the oceans, but on the ocean floor. And we're going to take a look at how this new evidence fits into everything. So look at this right here. Can you see on this map where mountains are located? And some of you might say, oh yeah, I see there's mountains here. I see there's the Andy Mountains. Looks like you have the Alps and the Urals, the Himalayas. So yeah, you can see a lot of mountains. However, are there other places on Earth where mountains are located? So you might say, well yeah, there's some smaller ones, the Appalachian Mountains, and there's smaller mountain chains here and there. And you would be correct, there are. But are there other places? And again, you look at our map, and it's mostly ocean. Might we be able to find someone in the bottom of the ocean? Huh, we'll take a look at that. So here are the procedures. We're going to look at images that match the pictures in the table that you see on page 25. And as you view each slide, what I want you to do is describe your observations in a notes column. And I'm actually going to give you some of the notes to add there as well. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to fix a mistake that's in the book. So the, here's the top picture, it's fine. But when you see these two pictures, this one right here and it says age of the ocean floor, you need to move that down here. And cr so cross it off and write it right here. Then up here write trenches on the ocean floor. These two titles should be reversed or flipped around. So they haven't fixed it in our book, it was wrong in the original book and it's still is wrong, they still have not fixed it, which is odd because they fixed other things, but they haven't fixed this mistake at all. So go ahead and switch those around. So what we're going to first talk about is the mid-ocean ridges or mountain ranges in the oceans. So before I showed you a picture and it just looked like this was all blue, but now take a look at this. Look at all these mountains. So what had happened is we removed all the water from the map. So if we were able to pull a plug and drain the oceans, this is what the bottom of the oceans would look like. And this is really odd. For years, scientists just thought the oceans, you would go down, you'd be at the bottom of the ocean, you would come back up over in Europe. And they thought it was flat. Never did anyone assume, or at least not officially, no one spoke up and said, hey, I think there's all these mountains in the middle of the oceans. It wasn't until much, much later, after Wagner's death, that they actually discovered these mountains. And when we look at one in particular, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, so these are mid-ocean ridges, but this is the one that runs right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So if you get a test question that says, where is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge found? It's found running down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So here it is, and it's a pretty hefty mountain range, so it's not small. And if we back up again, you can see it starts way up here by Greenland and it runs all the way down almost to Antarctica. And there's other ones as well. So what do we need to know? What kind of notes do we need to take? Well one, you can write down a ridge is another term for a mountain range. So when we talk about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it's really the Mid-Atlantic Mountain Range. 
Now, ocean bridges are typically volcanic mountains. And we're going to get later into the book, we're going to get into how these mountains form. And the largest of the mid-ocean ridges is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So you can see that all on that top picture. So that it's, it's a little gray, but in the picture you can see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge running right down the Middle Atlantic Ocean. So, any other questions about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Make sure you ask. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at trenches on the ocean floor. Now notice this is the middle one, so I had you switch these. So here's this huge, huge trench. And again, later in the book, we're going to talk about how and why these trenches are formed, and we're going to take a closer look at them. So, well, let's just start doing some of it right now. So we talked about plate tectonics. We talked about how the Earth is broken into plates. And these plates are always moving. Now, if two plates are coming together, this would be a convergent plate boundary. Now, when two plates come together, one of the plates, and it's typically the oceanic plate, subducts underneath the continental plate, mainly because it's more dense. Now, when it does it, this plate does not just slide down easily underneath the continental plate. It actually gets caught, because if you can imagine this maybe being two, three, four, five hundred miles, maybe a thousand miles, as this plate is sliding underneath, it's not just going to slip underneath really easy. All those rock edges are catching. And what happens is you get this deep, deep trench here. So a trench happens where two plates are coming together and one plate subducts underneath the other plate. Now notice as these plates start to subduct, you have some partial melting going on. And this comes up as lava and then eventually magma. And this is what could form some islands. And a lot of times they call it an island arc. Like um, Japan is probably the most famous island arc there is. So this is how a trench is formed. Now here's some notes for you to take. Oceanic plate and continental plate trench. This is so this is when an oceanic plate and a continental plate um, come together. It creates a subduction zone and volcanoes. The Andes Mountains in South America are a really good example of this. So this would be an oceanic and a continental plate. Now what happens if two oceanic plates meet? This is where you get deep deep ocean trenches. Volcanoes and island arcs form. For example, the island of Japan. Um, the Mariana Trench is over 35,994 feet deep. So when we look at this, technically this would be two oceanic plates because this would be considered oceanic plate right here. But if this continues to subduct, eventually this could just simply become a continental plate if eventually this gets worn away. So there's different types of um, Convergent plate boundaries, you can have oceanic plates and oceanic plates. You can also have oceanic plates and continental plates coming together. And in very rare instances, you might actually get two continental plates coming together. And that's what formed the Himalaya Mountains. Now, when two continental plates come together, you don't get ocean trenches. You get huge mountains as a result. So typically, in order to get a trench, you have to have an oceanic trench that is involved with it. So let's move on to the last one, age of the oceans. And this is pretty colorful, isn't it? Now, if you look down here, it's kind of hard to see. Your blue means it's the oldest rock. And as you go into light blue and to green, it's getting old or it's getting younger and younger and younger. And when you get to the dark red, it's the youngest rock. So when you look at here, here's North America, here's South America. This right here is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the newest rock, because new rock, new earth, is being created along this Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So that's why it says age of the ocean floor. And as you go away from the ocean floor towards North America, the rock gradually gets older and older and older. And as you move here from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge towards Africa, or towards Europe, the rock gets older and older and older. So there are some places where, if we back up again here, where some places like here, where this rock is being recycled, it's being um, destroyed. So if this was older rock, it's being destroyed. And so the older rock would be right here, and the rock over here would be younger. And eventually that rock would become older, and it would be destroyed as new rock keeps pushing it in this direction that we follow with the arrows. So let's take some notes. The ocean floor rock, which is basalt, was found to be much younger than the continental rock. 
In fact, some scientists will estimate it to be about 200 million years old on the ocean floor of the rock, and some scientists estimate it to be about 4 billion years old on the continents. Again, don't get hung up on the ages. Just know that new oceanic floor is younger than the continental rock. And you might ask, why? Well, ocean floor actually gets recycled. We're a continental rock because it is, or continental crust and continental plates because it's less dense, typically does not get recycled. It stays on top. So scientists found out that this ocean floor was so much younger than the older rock. Now the age of the rock closest to the mid-ocean ridge is the youngest. And the ocean floor rock is mostly volcanic in origin, which would make sense because it's new rock that was being created. And we also know that the continental rock is volcanic, metamorphic, and sedimentary. So all the oceanic rock is volcanic, which means it's just being created. And plus you have that basaltic rock, which is a more dense rock. Where the continents, they have metamorphic rocks, they have volcanic rocks, similar to the oceans, but they also have sedimentary rocks. In fact, when you look at the surface of the earth, sedimentary rocks is primarily the rock that you see, because a lot of sedimentary rock comes from other rocks, but they've been broken down and then they've been cemented back together with natural cements. So when we look at these mid-ocean ridges, these were a huge finding. And one of the guys that primarily found them or was instrumental in founding them was a guy by the name of Harry Hess. And Harry Hess was actually, it was during World War II, he was on a ship and that ship had depth finders so they could figure out how deep something was. And whenever they weren't tracking German subs, he would a lot of times use those to find out the height of the ocean floor. So he's the one that actually tracked a lot of that data down. And you might say, well, why would Harry Hess do that? Well, he was actually a geologist at Princeton University. And so by doing this, he was actually kind of doing research while he was also a, um, a Navy captain. I, th I think he was a Navy captain. I think he was in Naval Reserves or in the Merchant Marines or something like that. But he was actually being able to kind of double dip where, yes, he was in the war, he was fighting the war, but yet he's also getting scientific data at the same time. So here again, you see those trenches that are forming. And this is, you can see right here, you got Puerto Rico, you got Cuba. So this is not too far from the United States where one plate is subducting underneath another plate. So what I'd like you to do now is turn to page 24. And I'd like you to answer questions one and two. So go ahead and pause the video. All right. So now that you've had a chance to pause the video, let's go through these. Number one, after looking at this new data, what did scientists conclude about how the continents appeared to be moving on the surface of the Earth? Well, the combination of the new data about the ocean floor, along with the older theory of continental drift, suggested that the ocean floor was actually moving in addition to the continents moving. The continents used to be close together, forming one large supercontinent called Pangaea. But the formation of a new ocean floor led to the spreading of the ocean floor and the separation of the continental land masses. And then number two, explain how ocean floor spreading and how this process is related to the mid-ocean ridges. Well, the ocean floor spreading occurs when new rock is formed at the mid-ocean ridge. This is a continuous process. It's happening even today. And as this new rock is formed here at the mid-ocean ridges, it spreads from its center. And that's why the rock got older as you moved away from the mid-ocean ridges towards both North America and Europe, or towards South America and Africa. And this explains why the ocean floor at the mid-ocean ridges is so much younger, because it's being created there and it's spreading out and gets older as you move further away. So, a couple few, a couple more key points. We know that scientists came up with a model to synthesize some of what they've learned from this newest ocean floor data. And they call this model ocean floor or sea floor spreading. And this is a relatively simple explanation that has new rock being formed at the mid-ocean ridges and the spreading of the ocean floor apart in both directions. Now this was a very important discovery as it provided a plausible mechanism for how the continents move. Remember, Wegener couldn't explain how. This tends to explain how 
So it's like, voila, we've got it. We have a mechanism. We can figure out why or how it's moving. So he originally thought people, or people originally thought that these continents were plowing through the ocean, but we know that's not true anymore. They're, the whole plates are moving, and it's not just the continents. So make sure you have all this. Remember, you're going to have to know a lot of this for the test. Make sure you ask questions if you don't understand any of this or if you want me to re-explain any of this to you. So thank you, and good job.